Hey everybody, it's JV, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be building da 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 the Forge World Mortarion I got at the opening of the Warhammer Store and Cafe in Los Angeles, California. And here to assist us with that, because building things sometimes makes me anxious, is my friend who really, really enjoys building stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I love these boxes. They do such a good job. All the Primarchs come in them. We're keeping it right. Oh yeah. Um, so the only other Primarch I've put together is um, Vulcan, who is really fun. Uh, and consequently he has Death Guard on his base. Oh. Yeah, he has killed them. Oh. <laughs> um... Cool, so it comes with this little bitty instruction manual. There's not much to it. I think they assume you can kind of look at the picture and know how to build them. And then there's a guide to building resin models, because resin models kind of suck. Um, and that's what this is, a resin model? Yes, yes, okay. this model is resin. And how is this different from uh, some of the others? Like the, for example, the dryads that we built early, uh, earlier. Yep, are made with plastic. Oh, okay. Uh, so, I think all Forge World models, if not all the most, um, are made with resin. Um, I couldn't tell you why, there's probably some reason that somebody out there on the internet knows, but I don't. Um, uh, but, um, so the resin is like injection, uh, they put it into an injection mold. Okay. Um, and they have to put this um, uh, release agent on it, which is basically like soap or something. Gotcha, to help it come out of the... Yep, exactly. Come out of the mold, and as a result, it kind of gets this weird like film on it. And so that's, that's one of the things with the care guide uh, that this thing talks about on how to, how to take care of the model. Um, prior to painting it, is you're supposed to. Oh, does it need priming? Uh, well, yeah, it does need priming, and you, you need to um, like wash it also. So like, I don't, I don't know what the thing can see, but it's really shiny. Mm -hmm. That's the release agent. It kind of feels like slippery. I'm gonna zoom in on it here. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I'm just kind of getting all the pieces out. Um, I'm going to look at them because, like I said, this doesn't come with instructions uh, so much as just do it. And, like, you can see, like, Morty's whole body is, okay. just, is just already built. It's just one piece. So there's not a lot going on as far as the building part, which is kind of nice. Because when you get a model like this, you just want it together, uh, and then you can do the, the fun of the painting it. And um, there's not a lot of like modeling and stuff that goes goes along with it. Um, so 30k, which is what these these are for. Um, it's really cool because they come with a scenic base that he can like be displayed on. Oh, nice! But you want to play with them too in the game, right? Mm. So he doesn't walk around on this on this huge base in the game. He walks around on this little one. Oh. So they made it such that it just fits right in. The little base will fit right in there, and like this piece will go in there as well. Uh, so you can just take him right off the scenic base and play with him, and then you can put him right back on the scenic base. Cool. cool. Really, really fun. And it looks like this is going to go around and lock it in. Okay. Um, and, uh, so Vulcan has one that's like that too, uh, so what I did is I magnetized it so that this little piece won't, like, be all wobbly. Uh, so we'll see if we can do that or if we need to do that with him too. That's a great idea. Okay, uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is start trimming all this flash off. That'll take me a couple minutes to get flash off of all the pieces, but I'm just gonna clip. It's called flash. Yeah, um, 
this technically isn't flash. I don't know what this would be called, but flash is... So like this this part right here, mm -hmm. that's flash. Where it's really thin and, and doesn't, doesn't do anything or it's not part of the model. It's just this really thin like extra resin part. Mm -hmm. Um, from where like the two mold, like the mold and the top of the mold would have gone together. Gotcha. It just leaked in between those. But this is where like the mold was injected in, or the resin was injected into the mold, and then it flowed down through here and then filled up the mold this way. Can I look at that? Yeah. That's really cool. I get that resin models are like, I guess not as good as the plastic ones, but... It's not, um, as good. Um, so, okay. I'm speaking without any, like, authority here. Okay. Uh, this is just what, what I think. But, um... The plastic molds that have been used for a long, long time um, just weren't as good. And again, I don't know why. Like I said, there's somebody on the internet out there somewhere who knows the reason for that. Um, but they just weren't as good and they couldn't get the fine detail and all the crazy stuff like all the little tiny rivets and all the little writings and stuff and mm -hmm. like he's got I don't know it looks like fur maybe or chain mail or something uh in between the joints there yeah it really looks like chain mail yeah um but like for a long long time plastic molds just couldn't get that level of detail um and so recently games workshop has struck some bargain with some demonic entity uh, <laughs> and like figured out the secret to get plastic uh, injection molding to work mm -hmm. and that's why all their newer models are just so phenomenal um, and just look so fantastic as plastic. But for a long time Games Workshop, for their really nice models like this, they used fine cast resin, which was garbage. Um, and Forge World uses resin, obviously, which is, it's, it's a better quality than fine cast, but the biggest problem with resin is it's so brittle. It's yeah. just super, super brittle. So you have to be ultra careful, especially when you're trimming off this, uh, these little mold pieces, mm -hmm. cause you do it just a little bit wrong and it'll break like this whole section, and this whole section here off. And it's just really disappointing when you've got a nice model like this and you break half of it because you're trying to clean take, it up yeah clean it up and build it I can imagine that probably happens because of the way the resin is poured I mean you can actually see the uh, the lines here of it yeah and um, so I can imagine clipping at the wrong angle or with the wrong tension could make it split. Yeah. So that'd be the base that Morty stands on. Awesome. <sighs> this is like <laughs> very exciting, but also like I said, nerve wracking because I don't want to trim the wrong part. So is resin similar to plastic in that, like, it falls apart and you can kind of just glue it? Yeah, so then that's the other thing is, um, I've mentioned previously that I don't use plastic glue. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what doesn't work on resin models? Plastic glue. Okay. It just doesn't work at all because the way plastic glue works is it melts the plastic <laughs> and makes a bond. And this isn't plastic. It does not. Yep, not plastic. So, um... It's one of the other reasons I really like to use super glue, just because then I don't have to have two different types of glue. So there's these little nubs mm -hmm. that are going to go oh. in like that. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that I didn't uh, snip, that yeah, off. snip those off.
That was that was a real thick one. And this these are the ones where you tend to end up breaking the models because it's just so thick here to, to cut through. Mm. And if it's attached to something that's not as uh, thick as it were, then it tends to tends to snap them off. One of the other things that happens a lot. Everything that I'm saying, by the way, is like in this in this pamphlet. Like Forge World knows, you know what I mean? Like they're not blind to it. They don't try and pretend it doesn't exist. They they talk about all the stuff in here. Uh, but one of the cool things about resin models, or at least Forge World resin, is that if you heat it up, it's really malleable, which is nice as long as you don't like leave your models in the car. Um, oh so, no! So, so don't do that. No, I'm um, not doing. But um, let's say like, oh here here's a, here's a good example. This is, oh man, that's nice. Um, so these are straight, like they're not bent or curved. In the, in a, like this is curved obviously, but it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I put together a Storm Eagle one time, which is a, a Space Marine ship, like an airplane. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a piece on it that was about this long and like this, this big and it was, it was thin. And it was just like a, like a bulkhead. But when I got it, it was like warped. Yeah, like a 20 degree curve around it. It was awful. Um, but this even tells you, you put it in like hot water mm -hmm. and then bend it. Uh, and put it in hot sense. water and bend it. And you, it's it's a long process and you you can't be like impatient about it. Um, but you can you can like undo that, that warp, uh, which is nice. Um, I've not had the same amount of luck with plastic models doing that. But that might just be me. So what I'm looking at is um, Vulcan as an example. He's got these little pegs uh, similar to, to these pegs mm -hmm. that are on the bottom of his feet mm -hmm. uh, that slot into his base. Oh. Um, I don't see any spot for Mortarion to like slot in, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut these off. But I was making sure that these these little parts here weren't part of his model that are supposed to slot into the base, but I don't see that that is a thing. Um, I'm not cutting from the back like this, because I like to take this flat part of my clippers and put it against a flat part on the model mm -hmm. to get as flush as a cut as I can without cutting too much. less to trim. So there's a little bit of mold lining on the bottom here, which again is a thing that happens with resin. Uh, you can just, you can kind of see a, a, like a, a seam almost or a line. Mm -hmm. So it's really important, especially like on the bottoms of feet, um, to shave those down as much as you can and make it as flush as you can. Um, because otherwise when you glue it, the only part that's gonna be glued is that little raised uh, mold line, which is just, uh, gives a really poor seal. Yep. Ooh, yeah. So this one, like I said, Vulcan's got these nice little yeah. pegs, uh, but he does not. So I'm just kind of guessing, and I'm looking at the picture, and it looks to me like that spot right there is for this foot. Yeah, I think so. And it, it seems to be pretty nice and stable like that. Nice. So I don't know exactly what it's going to look like uh, where these slot together. Okay. So I'm not going to glue this uh, part to this base yet. 
Uh, first, I want to get him on the base, and then I'll put this one in there, and then glue this part on there so that I know how this sits in here. Okay. But I want him on the base first. gel comes in nice and handy because it doesn't run all over the place. Okay, so when that dries, his cape cloak thing this is flash yeah ah, there we go so what I was looking for was an obvious spot where it's not part of it and then like I said I'm just gonna put my trimmers against that that spot and then but it's less obvious in this middle spot where it's supposed to cut. So I'm trying to just be as, uh, what's it called when you don't do too much? Um, frugal. Sure, I'm trying to be as frugal as possible. hard to get the clippers in there. Oh, no. Okay. I did get the clippers in there. Right now it's the flash that's holding it on. A little, little trimmings. <laughs> Sorry if I keep coming off the camera. No, you're good. really hard not to rush and just like throw it all together really quick um, again because of the excited <laughs> big spike on the top mm -hmm. and then there's this little guy coming out the back mm -hmm. so as I'm looking at this like this part right here gets trimmed this part in between these other two gets trimmed but this one in the back in the middle does not get trimmed mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's tricky not to trim it it's just tricky to see it like what's supposed to be trimmed and what's not
<laughs> that was scary. You weren't kidding about the level of detail, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm looking at that, and it's like... This thing called Silence, I think, is the name of this weapon. I think so, yeah. Look up. Um, so I used to have Salamanders, Space Marines, which is why I got Vulcan. Um, but... I'm not going to say that they changed the, um, the lore of the Salamanders, but I'm going to say I didn't know what the lore of the Salamanders was. I thought they were just cool dragon guys with, like, with fire. Um, but then as I learned more about their lore and, uh, the story of 40k progressed, Salamanders turned into these, like, ultra good guys. Not what I play this game for. Um, so that made me really sad. And um, especially especially the Primarch, Vulcan. Ultra good guy. Um, so I got rid of all my Salamanders. I don't have any Space Marines anymore. But what I do still have is Vulcan. And uh, I also got one of the kits of his Fire Drake Terminators uh, to go along with him. And to make this like diorama, eventually I'll get finished with painting. But um, I bring that up while we're doing this because um, I think the next thing we need to get are some Death Shroud Terminators, so that he has his retinue yeah. to to cruise around with. That would be really cool. Silence. And yes, that is the name. Ah, cool. Is it? still dry. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to touch it then. So you're not a fan of the ultra good guys, huh? Not in 40k, I'm not. No, I'll take that back. Just not in general. I'm not. I mean... I wouldn't say that the Drukhari are good guys, and that's kind of my main army. So, like, it's interesting that there's a notion of good and bad, in, especially in this particular universe, because, like, that doesn't really mean much. That's valid. Um, salamanders, kind of one of their traits has always been that they're, like, real obstinate, like, never give up types, mm -hmm. which I thought was really cool. Uh, and then I found out that the reason for it is because they're, like, they really take it very, very seriously about their duty is to protect the people of the Imperium. Okay. And that's why they never give up. Gotcha. They fight battles to the last man, not because, like, of some meaningful strategic objective or, like, their, you know, pride or anything like that. It's because they'll they'll lose their entire company um on the on a planet so that all the people can escape and i was like meh <laughs> no. yeah give me give me some give me some blood angels or something who are just like that's not what we're here for we're not here for the people because people of the imperium are literally the currency yeah There's his creepy head. Um, his head's not creepy, it's gorgeous. Uh, it's super creepy. Alright, let's show the other people how creepy that head is. Okay. 
See, that's not creepy. Oh, it's super creepy. I love how all these Primarchs have these, like, like secondary weapons mm -hmm. that are just, like, nobody cares. <laughs> like, he's, he's got this little pistol. Sure, whatever. Like, what is that going to do in comparison yeah, like, to... Silence, yeah. Like, yeah. has he ever used the pistol? Probably in a book or something. Yeah, but... he actually does, I think, use it once. Yeah, it's not because he wanted to, right? Like, he wanted to go cut people in half. With his, uh... His scythe. Yeah, his silence. Um, these little fiddly bits. And sensors. He's got all these little, like... Yeah. You put out, um... Like, yeah, like air and poison. And stuff. Yeah, poison. It's been really interesting, like, as I'm listening to the Horace Heresy books uh, on Audible. So, like, they don't have the same narrator for every book, which I'm actually kind of grateful for, because some of them are, like, really, really good, and others are, like, not that great. Um, but everybody has a different interpretation of how Mortarion sounds. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'd imagine he's got, like, a really deep voice. Right, so like the first book that we hear him speak in that I recall is, I actually think he might make an appearance in Galaxy of Flames, but um, we don't really hear him like talk talk until Flight of the Eisenstein. Um, and it is, it is this like deep sort of like... Like he's been smoking for, for his whole life, is, mm. is what, I've, what I've got in mind. Okay. It's not quite that, um, but it is, it has a certain quality to it that, like, kind of gives you chills a little bit. Um, and now I'm on, still, I'm still on chapter 21, I haven't gotten any further, of, um, Thousand Suns. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Such a tragic book. Yeah. And he, um... He has his whole, like, speech at Nikea where he, like, condemns Magnus for being this, like, evil sorcerer type. And the the narrator has a completely different voice for this guy. It's, like, oh, no. raspy and gasping between words. It's really interesting. Um, and I, I disagree with that representation, personally. Okay. Because, like, he's, he thrives in this, right? Like, in this poisonous whatever. Do you think maybe, like, that's why he was raspy? Because he couldn't have all of his poison, like, during the council? Mm. Maybe. I didn't think of it like that. But, yeah, maybe. I Like, I, I didn't either until, like, this moment <laughs> when we were talking about it, right? Maybe that's how he sounds when he's not, like, in his element. That actually would make some sense. He's like, this sucks. I need my poison. I'm just gonna say some mean things about Magnus and then get out of here. Is that the Primarchs are just so cool. <laughs> I don't know if you can zoom in where I'm pointing with my uh, my exacto knife here. Can you see this little like corner of the plate, mm -hmm. um, so that it connects right there, um, and then on the other side. Um, I don't know if 
you can see up under his arm or not right here where mm -hmm. it connects. Yeah. So I'm just trying to hold it there for long enough for the glue to hold it and take. Um, it's just a little irritating um, because it's like, I put you there, just stay. But it won't do it. Try no, he's those things aren't heavy enough. Hopefully that will dry some, and in the meantime, let's put a scenic base on. I have the urge to put this in my mouth. Mm, do not. It will taste bad. Oh, okay. So he goes into the front. Interesting. Okay. Um, Vulcan goes into the back. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yep, I'm a child. Nice. I remember when Angron came out, he was the first Primark that they released of the World Eaters. Yeah. Crazy, bad. crazy, crazy. Bad. He reminds me of my birth dad. I don't, I don't like him. Oh no. <laughs> but so when Angron came out, you were like, "Let's build this." Yeah. So I actually don't like Angron's model. I know that, like, I don't know. I don't feel like they really captured. A raving maniac. Okay. Like a homicidal raving maniac. I don't think they really captured him. And I don't... It's kind of cruddy to say because I don't really know how you would capture it. But I don't like looking at a model and being like, I don't like it, and then offering nothing. Um, American Psycho captured it really well. Didn't that have Batman in it? The actor. Yep, the actor. I don't really remember it. It's actually one of my favorites. I remember I hated it up until the big reveal at the end. Up until that point, I was like, the fuck am I watching? Like, what is this garbage? <laughs> What's going on? Like, we're just, we're just, what, like, you know, fetishizing, like, murder? Okay, fine. And then the end happened, and I was like, oh my god. That was the biggest mindfuck. Viewers, you can disagree with what I just said, you, you but have, it won't change my permission. opinion. Okay. Well, while that's happening, is there anything else I can like? So I guess I can snip all these out. I'm pulling up a picture of the Angron model. Oh, gotcha. I'm 
trying to remember the next one. I want to say that Ferris Manus came out next. Um, but what I will say is that Ferris Manus and Fulgrim, there we go, I can't remember his name, uh, are my very favorite two Primark models. Whew. Here's Angron. And I would agree. He just looks like he's in battle. Yeah. And then you said... Uh, so Ferris Fulgrim. Manus and Fulgrim. Their bases uh, slot together. Like, next to each other? Yeah. Um, so in the event you have not read the Horus Heresy books, or you're not familiar with the first couple of books, there's a spoiler. Spoiler alert. I'm giving people time to navigate away. Oh, okay. Get out of here. Come um, I'll put a timestamp for you to come back if you don't want the spoiler. So, um, Ferris Manus and Fulgrim fight each other, right? Mm -hmm. In uh, Massacre. No. What was the third book called? Galaxy and Flames. Okay. That's the book where they fight, right? On S Band 5? Yes. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so that battle is what their models were built off of. Fulgrim and Ferris Manus end up fighting each other. Um, and uh, that duel on Isvan is um, what the two models are. Um, oh, okay. Like built together or designed from. So the two the two bases, like the two scenic bases, go together, and it's it's them like dueling each other, and they're just fantastic. Uh, plus, I love Fulgrim, and I love Ferris. Fulgrim is so like extra. And his model captures that perfectly, yeah. doesn't it? It does. Man, I just cannot get this cape to set. What is the thing that we could do to make it happen? I'm not sure. I don't want to use something like crazy, like JB Weld or anything, but I, I could do it. What's that? Uh huh. It's, um, I think JB Weld is two-part epoxy. You use JB Weld to put things together that you're never going to take apart again. Oh. Like, anything. Anything that you want to put together. Like your hands. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then they never come apart. Um, a lot of people use it to build titans that have, like, like joints that shear. Um, so they'll put JB Weld in there so that those joints will never separate. Um, but it's, I think it's two-part epoxy, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it is. Epoxy is like cement, right? Uh, it's like, a um, cement's not the right word. It hardens into, uh, so the two parts of it, when they go together, it's a chemical reaction that hardens into whatever the epoxy is, right? So. I, I would call epoxy like its own substance. I don't know if that's right, but I do. Um, so like resin, right, is it's probably more than two parts, but when it's injected, it's liquid, not because it's hot, but because it's it's two different chemicals, and when they mix together, then they harden. Um, JB Weld and a lot of the two-part epoxies are like that, where it's like two tubes, and then when you when you squeeze them together. Gotcha. That's what. Yeah. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do here in order to get this to work. So what I am going to do is just, man, it doesn't even want to bend. try glue again, but a little bit differently this time, aiming for some bigger connection spots. I'm working. 
and to see if there's any tips online. I'm gonna We're going to watch somebody else's build video to figure out how to do our build. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm looking through Reddit. Psh, we don't have time to watch YouTube videos. <laughs> it's mostly just how to paint. Feels a little bit better. Maybe I just, so to speak, got it in there a little better this time. So I'm gonna try and hold that like this with my hand. And meanwhile, I'm gonna put some other stuff on here. So I'm gonna do that. Um, I should not have cut these out prior to. Uh, like because doing each one of them? Listed with numbers. Yep, but it's a little bit more fun that way. <laughs> yep, pipe B1 through 6. Um, I guess we're going to find out where they all make sense to go. They go on the side. Oh yeah, there's little holes for like each one. Nice, okay. Okay, so these two big ones go on the top, that's easy enough. And then, these ones all look pretty similar, but this guy is a little different. Oh no, he's not. Yeah, those are all the same, or pretty similar, I shouldn't say the same. He just does not want to stay in there. Oh, this reminds me of putting together um, dark ones. Talos paint engines. The two yellow ones up there um, have little parts like this. What? So, like, uh, it's relatively obvious what they're for in Martarium, but what are they for on those guys? So they're not little pipes, but they're like little. So the the way that the um, I've told you before, like the pa Talos paint engines are kind of like Roombas. Like what they do is they go out for the homunculi masters and get um, body, parts. body parts and peoples and things and, and they come back with their trophies. And they make little happy sounds. Yeah. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, but so as part of that they've got these like little tiny, in, in comparison to the model, little tiny um, like cutters and grabbers all over them. That are for cutting and grabbing. Oh, that's what the. Yeah. And so they remind me of this because this is a little tiny. And. Got these big dumb clumsy fingers. No, not the logo. It really does not want to stay. So it connects on three of the four spots, but this fourth spot, which is where like all of the weight is, it just won't stay. It won't stay connected. I'm gonna put that aside and come back to it. How come you wash them after you build them? Ah. Uh, yeah, we probably should have washed it before we did build it. Uh, usually I'm building much larger models uh, for Forge World stuff. Um, but it, it, w it won't be a problem. We'll just, um, we'll just soak them in water and just not scrub them, which we shouldn't need to. Because he doesn't have any big, like, plates. Do you think that would affect 
whether or not this sticks. Mm. It's possible. I'm gonna try washing it. We'll have to wash this also. Mm. But you can try washing it. Maybe, maybe just one will work. Is there a specific soap water ratio? Mm. Nope, just soap and water. Resin's pretty resilient, so you don't have to worry about hurting it. I mean, unless you use like alcohol, yeah, or acid or something crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't know if I got it all. Do you want a piece of beef jerky? Yeah, thanks. I tend to get really quiet when I'm doing these tiny little fiddly parts. I need to be able to focus. Yeah. Oh my god. I like... Tarion's armor is like very functional. Yeah, I know. And Vulcan's is nice. not. So I've not looked at the Vulcan one up close. If you want to grab them, you can. You also don't have to. I know. Yeah, his base is not complete yet. Um, painting Death Guard is a, a thing that I'm afraid of. Do you want me to paint them? Yeah, I might. After we figure out how to... Yeah, after you figure out how to do it. We just need to get the right paints. Yeah. Okay. Um? um? I somehow got... Oh. From this. Oh. Maybe not from this. So you, meant, <clears throat> you mentioned that they come off before playing. Mm -hmm. But it's like super well integrated. Not much. I'd be scared of that. There we go. It's not supposed to be that difficult. What is going on here? Okay. Wow, oh, yeah, that was stuck even harder than it usually is. So that's his base when he's off of it. And then, like I said, I did a magnet right there. Right there. So this just doesn't want to go back together quite right. I think the heat is messing with some of our stuff. Uh, potentially. There are, um, there 
are definitely some painters out there who are just really good at making my, my painting feel inadequate. Oh. So like there are some people who like legitimately painted scales on his armor. And you're like, oh, but there already are scales on his armor. And I'm like, yeah, but in this like these plates right here mm -hmm. on his thighs, mm -hmm. they like paint a different color of like scales. And they look fantastic, <laughs> but I don't. I don't have that ability, unfortunately. So these little top tubes, pipes, whatever, they've got like this little, this little flash that needs to be cut off right here, right next to the, um, the actual nub that you need to keep. <laughs> This is super fun. There. There. Yeah, super great. Yeah, because without it, it won't go into the, the hole on the top of his armor. sense yeah. he would be drawing this with his right hand yeah to reach across yeah not usually how you want to draw a pistol though draw a pistol this way are you sure mm -hmm. okay yeah. you don't want to reach across your body to draw a weapon okay. because this way if you draw it it's one motion like a very quick motion and you're pointing it at somebody but if you're drawing across your body then in order to point it at somebody you have to draw it back across your body okay that makes sense in it's terms just a long efficiency. yeah efficiency and time and speed um, so I watched uh, there's I'm sure there's tons of them well I, maybe not tons I've watched some, uh, like, basically Super Smash Brothers videos okay. where they take the different Primarchs and they fight them against each other and they do, like, a tournament. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it's, they're, they're really neat. Um, but, uh, man, I'm trying to remember now who was, like, the really good, like, kind of the winner, as it were. Um, it was not Mortarion, unfortunately. Mortarian's not very good at fighting the other Primarchs. No. And as much as I would like for Vulcan to be really good at fighting the other Primarchs, also not good. Um, just a side note, like the way that you just dropped his little head in was awesome. Oh. Um, I bet you... Well, actually, I don't know. I don't know who would win. Obviously, the War Master is really good, and I'm trying to remember if Lionel Johnson was better than him or not. Because one of the things that... Um, so the thing with all of these Primarchs is they're super tough, and they're super hard to kill. So it's never, like, a one-shot ever. Uh, especially with like Vulcan and Mortarion, they tend to last a long time. Um, but because of the weapon options that Horus has, and um, ooh. sorry, this is fitting better. I wonder if I wonder if that pistol is like oh, it's support. And kind of a guide. Yeah, I think putting the pistol on first is the right, the right choice there. Um, right. So uh, Horus has, uh, he's got his two, two weapons, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, right. Horus. Yeah, he's got the talon and he has sword. Chain sword. Nope. He's got uh, Worldbreaker, the uh, hammer. Uh, mace. Mace. Big old mace, yeah. 
world breaker. Um, and so there's like a combination where the, with those that's really, really effective against the Primarchs. Um, or any, any big things, rather, because it like takes away from their... Like he can hit you with world breaker and then you go last, so he gets to go before you next time. So you can just keep doing that. And then um, his other weapon, the Talon, uh, gets to like reduce your weapon skill, so it makes it harder to hit him later. Hmm. Um, but I want to say that the Dark Angel's Primark had some something that kind of countered all of that. But like Vulcan isn't, even in the lore, right, isn't like even a particularly good fighter. He's just crazy strong. He's got this big old giant Dawnbreaker hammer. Or Dawnbringer, Dawnbringer hammer. Um, that like, against people, right, or vehicles or anything, against anything that's not like a Primark, he just, he just annihilates them. So Kaboom. he doesn't, what? Kaboom. Yeah. So he doesn't need, like, a million attacks. Um, and Mortarian's kind of similar with his big scythe here. He can just walk into, like, a horde of dudes and just sleep, just mow them down. Um, so as a result, I think he's got an ability where he can hit, like, everybody around him or something. If I remember correctly, Mortarian doesn't have a whole lot of attacks. Um, but then you get up to people like Sanguinius and Frian, uh Fulgrim, right, who are the fighters or all the, are the duelists, and they have like seven attacks, and these guys have like four, and you're just like, what am I supposed to do <laughs> against these guys? Um, but then you get to like him, he's got a three plus, or a two plus armor save and a three plus invulnerable save. Um, he's just so hard to kill. I'm remembering... In which book? Probably Galaxy and Flames. Um, where they're like, it like very casually mentions that Vulcan just kind of like gets exploded. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And being like, mm, I don't know if that's <laughs> gonna work. Uh, obviously, I've not gotten far enough to like hear hear about him further, but I don't think he died. Okay, well, I won't give it away, whether or not he did. Um, but, uh... I have a lot, of, I have a lot of... I have a lot of love for Vulcan, um, even though he's, like, the ultra-good guy. Um, and I don't want to talk too much about Magnus, because you're right in the middle of reading about him right now, so... I don't want to get too crazy with Magnus, but Magnus is by far my favorite Primark, without question. You called him a Pisces the other day. Yeah. And I think that fits. Well, he's very changey. Mm. Changey and psychic. Right. And he's even attached to... So it looks like these sensors aren't really attached to it. Oh, I guess I guess they do have attachment points in there. I see what I mean. I'm gonna die. We are nearing the end here. Already? Oh yeah. That cloak really really uh really got me. I don't remember Vulcans being a big pain. When I got Vulcan, man, that was like... I fortunately didn't have to work that day, which is awesome, when he arrived in the mail. So I got him at like 9 in the morning. And I built him, and I painted him uh, to, the, to the level that he's painted right now. Um, in about... Let's see, I think I finished called it finished at like two or three and I just I didn't I didn't stop like the whole time 
I know that's not super crazy for like Warhammer people to like do a long stretch like that, but non Warhammer people are like, what do you mean you did this for seven hours? Maybe also keep in mind the uh, hyper focused ADHD thing. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Sorry, I know I keep going out of frame. It's okay. Yeah, so he's got these little, like, <clears throat> this little piece right here. Zoom in on it. It's kind of like up under his arm there and next to his backpack. Um, it kind of looks like flash, looks like it's supposed to be trimmed off, but it's where these sensors attach to. Oh. Um, I'm glad I didn't trim those. What's really cool is the amount of movement they've captured in these models in particular. When did they come out with uh, the Mortarion model? Ooh, I don't know. A while ago. Um, I want to say he was one of the earlier ones. Because uh, it, it seemed like they were trying to kind of release them in like book order, mm. not sorry, uh, not Horus Heresy books, not that order, but the the game books. Okay. And so like the first book was uh, like the Isfan Massacre. It wasn't the first book. It was early on. Um, but so the Death Guard have been with Horus since the beginning, right? talking about that motion that they captured. And I agree, which is why I'm swapping these two. Because it looks to me like this one makes more sense on, on the other side, just based on the, the way that they flow and fall. Yeah. So glad I get to watch you do this. Still don't like this one over here. Instead. Yeah, that's better. So I just flipped it upside down. So I didn't. I know you could see. I don't have this like intrinsic knowledge of what the camera can see and what it can't. <laughs> and it takes a lot of practice to get aware of like... Oh yeah, that looks really good. Oh, to your right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna zoom in now. And then put your hand behind it. Perfect. You can move your hand now. And you can rotate it. That looks really good. Yeah, I really like the... The swoosh. So the... The one thing I will say about, like, when I look at the Angron model online, it just... I'm like, this doesn't... This doesn't capture what I think he should be. Um, but then... Even Mortarion, I've never been thrilled about him. Uh, 
but now that I've got them like here in front of me, there's just all these things that they just can't capture. And Vulcan is the same. They just can't capture everything yeah. with pictures. Um, and it's just exasperated by the amount that the, all these Primarchs have of detail. Um, so I imagine that when we do eventually get Andron, which we will. Because we're going to get all of them. All of them. Uh, gosh. I still wonder if they're eventually going to release an Emperor model. Uh, they have to, right? They have to. I don't know. They have to. Do they? I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. God, yeah. if they do, they better not do that like limited edition stuff where they're like, oh. we've only got a thousand. Oh, I think. I think they might have a riot on their hands if they yeah, try Yeah, that would be not good. Okay, here we go. I think we're going to do it. I think it is Simon's time. I want my weapon. Does that have a little yeah. loop? So there it pegs. Yeah, I don't even need to glue it almost. I'm going to. Obviously. Yeah, I'm going to. Little bloops. Dang. Dang. Okay, so then what I want to look at is how this will fit in here. But bam. Looks like this goes like this over the top of it. Ka-chow. Nope. You just said ka-chow. Yeah, I did. Like that movie. Which one? With the cars. Yeah. I believe it was called Cars. Cars. <laughs> to your right up there is a ring of light. This. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. I didn't know how to words it. Thank you. Thing, like if you're carrying an armful of stuff, like a whole bunch of things, and you drop one, just leave it. Come back <laughs> for it. Don't try and pick it up. So then everything will come off. Yeah. It's kind of the same. If I'm doing this one thing, that one piece fell off. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stop what I'm doing. Come back and get it. Yeah, so this one I don't think needs a magnet. Also, I don't know where I would put the magnet. Yeah, it doesn't have a big enough part for it. Ring of light. Yeah, I was like, how do I use the words for this?
just holding that sensor in. Once the sensor is glued, the, the stain's done. Oh my goodness. Stick a fork in him. Um, I don't know if he'd like that. No. Well, he might. I guess it depends on whose fork. Awesome. Yeah. If you turn, um, Vulcan. Yeah. Um, and then, do you mind rotating Morty? This one? Yeah. Thank you for joining us today on our Forge World Martarion build. Sorry for making motion sick with the camera here. <laughs> um, yes, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was really cool. Yes. And so next time we will be painting Martarion. And it will be me doing the painting and yes. my friend doing the camera work. That's fact. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you like what you saw today and you want to see more, hit that button down below. Subscribe. Become a member of the Jackalope Tribe and earn your antlers. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and remember, I release a new video every Friday. So I will see you back here again next week. Hi there. I have a letter cast, also known as JB Speaks, on YouTube here. And I just wanted to let you know that, as always, there is new stuff coming out this Friday at 1600 on my channel. The link is youtube.com forward slash c forward slash jbspeaks. You can also find this content embedded at my website, ilettercast.com. On the first Friday of every month, I do an interview with an indie author for my podcast, Indie Author Connection. On the second Friday of every month, I do a podcast episode for my Grimdark book club where we review a Grimdark book. <laughs> and on the third Friday of every month, I upload something kind of random. Sometimes it's a build or paint with me, sometimes it's a video game playthrough, and sometimes it's a tea vlog where I just talk to you about my life. Feel free to subscribe, become a member of the Jackalope tribe, and earn your antlers. You get bonus points if you click the notification bell, and win a piece of my soul, and potentially a free book at your doorstep if you also sign up for the mailing list at ilettercast.com. What are we doing? Yeah, ma'am.